Hi everyone, this is Corgi from Ruler Protocol and as we're expanding to Binance Smart Chain we're expecting a lot of new users and in order to make the onboarding easier we decided to make this quick little introductory video about how Ruler works, how you can use it and how you can benefit from it. So let's take a look at this graph. Here in the middle you have this huge red rectangle which represents Ruler Protocol and it consists of two things, pairs and metapools. Another important thing that we'll need to understand in the beginning are the RC tokens and RR tokens. So let's look at them one by one. Ruler pairs really just represent what kind of collateral you can supply and in what stable coins you're going to have to pay back your loan. Those pairs also determine how much of stable coins are you going to get per unit of collateral. Let's now take a look at RC and RR tokens. RC tokens they represent your right to claim stable coins from ruler protocol after the expiry of the loan. So if you had 10 RC tokens, then after the expiry of the loan, you can claim 10 stable coins. And if you have uh, RR tokens, those represent the obligation to pay back the loan. So if you have 10 RR tokens, it means that you have to pay back 10 stable coins to ruler before the expiry of the loan. Um, I know this sounds a little bit confusing, but once we go to an example, it will all become more clear. Uh, a last, last uh, portion of the ruler protocol that we would need to understand are metapools, and metapools are the way we swap between RC tokens and stable coins. So we use curve metapools on Ethereum, nerve metapools on Binance Smart Chain, and this allows us to swap RC tokens for stable coins with very low slippage so you get maximum amount of money for your collateral and for your RC tokens. So this was a high level overview and now let's take a look at an example. So I hope everything will fit into place once we look at an example. So let's say we have Bob the borrower and he happens to have some red BNB. He wants to hold on to it but he still needs some stable coins for some reason. right? So what can he do? He can go on to Ruler and he'll notice that there's a wrap BNB BUSD pair. So what he'll do now is he's going to supply his wrap BNB as collateral and um, this wrap BNB BUSD pair has a mint ratio. So mint ratio really just tells how much of RC tokens and RR tokens are you going to get per unit of your collateral. So let's say this pair, this wrap BNB BUSD pair has a mint ratio of 300. So once Bob supplies one wrap BNB as collateral, he's going to get 300 RC tokens and 300 RR tokens because that is the mint ratio, 300 for this pair. But what will happen with those RC and RR tokens? So RR tokens, they're directly going to go to Bob's wallet. This means he owes ruler protocol 300 stable coins. Um, in this case, let's say he wants BUSD as uh, by, by, by the end of the loan expiry date. The RC tokens don't go directly to Bob because he wants the stable coins. He doesn't want some RC tokens. RC tokens are going into the meta pool where we swap the RC tokens for stable coins, right? And here's where the market making comes in. Since Bob was the first borrower, the, the balance in this meta pool, which is an AMM, is pretty good, right? So RC, the amount of RC tokens and the amount of BUSD tokens in the pool is proportionate, uh, is equal, for example. Um, as he supplies his red BNB, RC tokens are minted, 300 RC tokens, and they're supplied into this meta pool, right? The amount of RC tokens goes up and the Corresponding, the, the corresponding amount of BUSD goes out of the meta pool, right? And he's going to get some BUSD almost equal to the amount of RC tokens that were minted. So if he was minted 300 RC tokens, then he would get almost 300 BUSD because there's still some slippage, right, in the pool. So this was a pretty good deal for him. But what if another borrower comes in, also supplies one red BNB, also mints 300 RC tokens, right? Because that's what's happened when you provide collateral. He also gets 300 RR tokens. His 300 RC tokens go to the same pool. There's more RC tokens now, even less BUSD in the pool now. So for every RC token, he gets smaller amount of BUSD than Bob did. So this um, 
loan is not as interesting for the second borrower as for Bob, right? Because he's going to get less BUSD. And that is where his interest comes in. So at the end of the expiry, he still needs to return 300 BUSD because that's how many RR tokens he has. And RR tokens represent the amount of stable coins you need to return, remember? But the thing here is that for his RC tokens, he gets less than 300 BUSD, right? And that is where the interest comes in. But this is also a very good opportunity for lenders because given this disbalance, Alice has some stable coins. She has some BUSD and she wants to make some money. So she sees this situation and she supplies some BUSD and gets some RC tokens in return. So she's a lender. So this is what happens. Because there's so little BUSD and so many RC tokens, once she puts BUSD here, she will get a lot of RC tokens. In fact, she will get more RC tokens than she put BUSD. So let's say she put 100 BUSD, then she'll get 110 RC tokens, for example. So why is this important? Let's now look and move closer to the expiry of the loan period. So before the expiry, uh, Bob is responsible and he gives his 300 RR tokens, right? Because that's how much was minted, 300 RR tokens and 300 RC tokens. He repays 300 BUSD because he's returning 300 RR tokens and he has to repay the same amount of stable coins and he gets his collateral back. Then what Alice can do is she can send her RC tokens and get BUSD back in a one-to-one -one proportion. So she has 110 RC tokens, so she's going to get 110 of BUSD back. And remember, she only deposited $100 to get 110 RC tokens. So she profited 10 BUSD. So this is a, an overview of how the protocol works and what is the important, what is the part that market plays in all of this. So now let's just connect this to our user interface and see how the users actually interact with the protocol. So this is a very new UI that we just recently released. It's a light UI. It should be very simple to interact with. And let's just take a look at what the user will encounter when the user goes on the approvalprotocol.com. So if you're the borrower, you would want to select what kind of collateral you want to provide. So since I'm on Ethereum right now, uh, we have this many collaterals and let's say we want to use wrap Bitcoin. So we want to provide wrap Bitcoin as collateral and we want to get DAI as stable coins back, right? So if I provide one wrap Bitcoin as collateral, we want to look at mint ratio. Mint ratio for one wrap Bitcoin is 32,000. So what that means is that you will get 32,000 RR tokens, and that is how much you will have to return in stable coins, 32,000 DAI, and 32,000 RC tokens are going to be minted, sent to the meta pool, and exchanged for stable coins. So after that, after the exchange, you are going to get 31,832 DAI. And the, the difference from 32,000 is really the interest that you are gonna have to pay out of your own pocket. Okay, so if you are the lender on the other side, you will go onto the land page, and here you will also select a collateral, um, a stable coin that you would like to provide, and I'll explain why you need to select a collateral. Um, you select the stable coin that you would like to lend. Let's say I would like to lend 1,000, uh, die and once I lend 1000 die I will actually immediately receive 1003 RC tokens so once the loan expires on May 31st I can come with those 1003 RC tokens provide them to ruler protocol and get 1003 die back so three die is my profit on this land so I hope this was uh, helpful. I thought this was clear. I, I hope <laughs> if you enjoyed watching this video, uh, please let us know. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments to this video or go to our Discord or, or Telegram. We're very responsive. Thank you and I hope you like using our protocol.